Uh, yeah, I think guys are missing the five seven. Everybody and their mama's missing the five seven. Tell us what you're gonna do. If you're the guy that had this truck right now, what would you do? You're gonna dump it at the dealership and take an L? Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if it was me, I never would have bought it, first of all. Yeah. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wrenches in my top drawer. Hey, what's up, guys? This is MJ100K, and today we are focusing on the Toyota recall of the century, the Toyota Tundra recalled for potential engine failure. Everybody is sad about this, and if you have bought one of these vehicles, well, let's see if you have some options for getting something else. I have heard that some dealers are not letting you even trade them in, but if you can find a dealer that is willing to risk it and take a trade in, what will you get instead? All right, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. I got to be honest, I never liked this engine from the beginning. Um, yep. I always thought that it was way too complicated. I saw another YouTuber, the Car Care Nut. He mm -hmm. did a breakdown on this engine and he didn't, it looked like he didn't like it very much either, but I didn't like it. It's way complicated. It's got two turbos. It's got, I heard it has two uh, throttle bodies. It's got two separate intercoolers for the turbo. It's jam-packed in there and it's going to be hard to work on. Very complicated. And mm -hmm. this is the engine that nobody asked for and they gave it to us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the 5.7 Dane. Dane. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I think guys are missing the 5.7. Everybody and their mama's missing the 5.7. Tell us what you're going to do. If you're the guy that had this truck right now, what would you do? You're going to dump it at the dealership and take an L? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it was me, I never would have bought it, first of all. Yeah. If it mm -hmm. were me, I'd give you two options. If yep. somebody is naive enough to take this trade in, I would trade it in and I would get a 5.7. I think 2001 is the last year of the 5.7. If you don't want to get that one, I have a pick for you, and let's check it out. This is a Dodge, and this is um, this is the five seven liter Hemi, mm -hmm. uh, twenty twenty two. Now I did some quick research on this. The twenty twenty three and twenty twenty four, they have some type of uh, mild hybrid system. I think it's called E Torx or something, and. Yep. There are some problems that have been reported with that already. Uh, all time, oh, just a whole bunch of just Google problems with the Hemi e Torque system, mm -hmm. and you will be shocked and amazed at all of the problems. But this looks like to me is the last year of the Hemi, just a regular old Hemi, mm -hmm. and it's got uh, the eight speed transmission. Now, this eight speed transmission is uh, this is from Z a ZF transmission. Mm -hmm. So that's a German company and they make pretty good transmissions. They actually, um, that a version of that HB transmission is in the Toyota Supra and it's in a bunch of BMWs and, uh, some other vehicles. And that, this is a pretty good transmission. I mean, it's very good actually. Mm -hmm. Yep. You do have to, uh, change the fluid. Uh, I think about every hundred thousand miles, the fluid is very expensive, but you know, I mean, it costs what it costs. I think it's about like eight dollars a quarter or something. Okay, not terrible. Uh, yeah, it ain't too bad. Uh, and um, what else? The for this vehicle, the filter is inside the transmission pan. Mm -hmm. So when you replace the uh, when you do the the transmission flush, when you get the filter and they tell you you need a pan, don't go crazy and tell them that they're lying because it's true. Mm -hmm. but anyway yeah i like this one look at this look at this dane this is only a couple years old thirty five thousand dollars not bad and uh this looks nice to not me bad. the most important part of a vehicle is the engine and transmission mm -hmm. so I, I like this one it's just got the basic the basic hemi and yes they do uh they develop a hemi tick from uh i believe it's the lifters yeah, they go bad. Uh, it's about around seventy, hundred thousand miles. But look, I mean, nothing's perfect. I'd rather replace the Hemi tick lifters than replace the turbo in the Tundra. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say this is a pretty good option for guys that are looking to get into a, a nice new used truck. You know, it's only two years old. But what about uh, somebody that 
just got a brand new Tundra. Now they want another brand new pickup. Would you tell, still tell them to go to the Ram? Yeah. Look, people are going to stop with all this nonsense mm-hmm. about having to get a brand new truck. But mm-hmm. let me tell you, let me tell you something. When I used to test vehicles at Toyota, right? We did, me and another engineer, we were talking and this wasn't like an actual study or anything. It was just something that we noticed from all the yeah. cars that we tested. The best time to get a vehicle looks like between 20 and 80,000 miles. Mm-hmm. Because believe it or not, like people, they have this misconception that because I buy something new that is perfect. Yeah. And that is beyond incorrect. Mm-hmm. A lot of things happen when you first make a part or a car. There can be defects that come right from the factory. Mm -hmm. And you have to wade through these defects when you first get a vehicle. Like that is why they have lemon laws. They're not for cars with 200,000 miles. They're for new cars. Yep. Therefore, if you fix a car more than, if you have to fix the same repair more than three times, Mm -hmm. it's considered a lemon. And this is from new cars. So these parts aren't failing because they're old. They're failing. It's just engineering defects that might, it might be something from production. It might maybe they didn't make it quite right. Maybe the yep. calibration is a little off. Yep. I mean, this is what happens when you first get a vehicle. Yep. So stop worrying about, oh, it's got to be brand new. No, it don't. Just get good at buying used cars. And I can show you a couple secrets real quick. Mm-hmm. Let me show you. Look at probably this. Already sold. It's probably gone. 2,400. Hundred mile, about twenty five hundred miles. That's nothing. That's <laughs> and I, I looked up the Carfax. Like, if you ever want to look at the Carfax, I'm not going to do it right this second. But look, all you got to do is go to the dealer website and look for that car, that car or truck on the dealer website, and they usually put it on there. Yeah, the Carfax right there. And I looked at this one. The guy did like three oil changes. He only got like three thousand miles. <laughs> this car is yeah. a baby. Yeah. This, this yeah. Is, if we could profile that owner, he's probably a senior citizen and he probably drove it a couple times a week. And that is the exact person you want to buy a used vehicle from. Exactly. You got yeah. to, you don't just shop the vehicle, you shop the previous owner, you look at their maintenance habits. And then you 100%. get a, you could call, find a mobile mechanic in your area that will go and look at the vehicle for you and they yeah. can look at it right on the lot. And then you could be, you can make sure, you know, because these used car lots, man, or dealerships, they will, they will sell you anything. Yeah, exactly. If you're in Southern Minnesota, call me. I do it for people all the time. Yeah, there you go. But look, um, but yeah, so here's a couple tricks. All right. So click on vehicle history. We on cargurus.com. This is my, mm-hmm. my favorite used car website. Look at, click on single owner. Mm-hmm. And look at hide vehicles with accidents, frame damage, theft, uh, fleet. Oh, I'm I'm not so bad about fleet anymore. I think a lot of times fleets take care of their cars or yeah. trucks. Yeah. So click on all these, and then you can narrow it down from there. Dane, what is your pick for people that want to trade in their Tundra and get something else? What will you pick, Dane? Well, there's pretty much one obvious answer here. That's going to do everything that the Toyota Tundra is going to do. And that's the Honda Ridgeline. What? <laughs> get out of here. You ain't picking over. No <laughs> nah, first, I want to say to anybody that has this truck, that bought this truck because they wanted the new technology, they wanted the twin turbo V6, I'd say hold tight. Don't panic and make a quick, rash decision. You're going to lose a lot of money if you do that. Toyota will take care of you at some point eventually. But if you cannot wait, you have to take the loss because the dealer doesn't want to take it unless you take some lowball number. You need to get yourself into a new pickup. I'm going to tell you what not to buy first. First thing not to buy is the Honda Ridgeline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's For, not even a pickup. That's like yeah, a baby car. I don't, exactly. I don't have time to even go through the reasons. It's it, The first one, though, being not a truck, and then the rest just to, you know follow up. With behind that. <laughs> and then two, Ford is having even more problems with recalls. So do not buy any Ford truck for any the reason. Trucks too? Everything. Everything. Oh, for the last two years, just, yeah, if you're unaware of this fact, just do a quick Google search Ford recall and you'll find days worth of reading on all stuff that's going wrong. Ford's not honoring some claims. It's been stuff Uh-oh. that's been going on for a while. And it's not getting better. New stuff's been recalled on the Rangers, and it's it just keeps coming for Ford. Okay. It's not like it's a 
for those guys. All right. So, so that leaves you. Ordain. So that leaves you with a couple options, right? Really, that leaves you with two options now. Um, if you're gonna, if you gotta go brand new, if you gotta go brand new. You got the Ram and the Silverado. And if you're gonna go with a brand new pickup, I'm picking the Silverado over the Ram every time. Get you the 6.2 liter V8. You got like a little over 400 horsepower. It's got that same eight-speed or 10-speed transmission, depending on what option you get. Great interior. They ride nice. Very dependable. No, like, no recalls on those trucks at all right now. GM's like top three for minimum recalls in the last couple couple of years. You're going to be a very happy guy. Now, hold on, Dane. I've heard that there was a transmission problem with the Silverado. What is up with that? Which one? 10-speed or the 8-speed? I don't know. I didn't really look into it. Which, I remember there being one of with one of the six speeds or eights and that was a couple of years ago um but i think that was pretty small i'm not sure if that affected oh well, actually i know it did affect some of the silver aisles but not all of them and they offer a couple of different transmissions depending on engine package and these things um because i know the colorados had the same issue but because there's some crossover in, in those transmissions but mm. yeah if you do a little digging into it if uh you know, as a, as a buyer, you should do a little bit of research. So MJ says, check out the trans, make sure there's no issues there. I would uh, dig a little deeper on that. You like the 6.2 or just a 5.3? I like the 6.2. It, it's a much it's pretty similar model. anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. You're going to, yeah, you're not going to be giving up any power compared to what that uh, Toyota has. Really, you're going to have more great towing capacity. Um, there's, and you got to get four wheel drive. You might as well. Yeah, if you're getting a truck, I mean, come on. Just if you want to get a truck, just get a V8 with four wheel drive and stop right. playing around. Right. Yeah. You get the truck, you get the toy. Which one is it? Because the two wheel drive is a toy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, you tell other guys that are in the market for a used truck, though, just, hey, I'm going to take my L on this new pickup. Want to use one? Get a 5.7 Tundra. Just get the, just get the most recent 5.7 Tundra. I'd be happy. Hey, and if you just want to get a, another Toyota, just get a 5.7, a couple years old. 2021 is yeah. the last year. It's so hard to beat naturally aspirated V8. They're so good. That's what a truck is. I mean, should we even call the Tundra a, uh, a Tundra anymore with their V6? I don't know. I think you got to earn the name Tundra. <laughs> you have to yeah, earn that. So Dane is saying that they fixed the transmission problem. If you have a transmission problem, send your claim to Dane's house and he will yeah. have to fix it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, what about the uh, the AFM DOD problem? Do they still have that? Probably. Just the Probably. Way <laughs> I don't know. You got. I think we're just going to have to get used to this AFM problem. Ed, I think we're just going to have to look at it as like a timing belt. Like you have to change your timing belt at a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. I just, just pay you're just someone. Just going to have to change your lifters at a hundred thousand miles from now. Or just pay someone to tune it and turn it off, and then you don't. Then you don't have to worry about it. No, no, I don't you, think you know, they. They don't listen, know how to do it right. You paid for eight cylinders. You want to use them all when you want to use them all. Turn that nonsense off. They may have tuned it uh, enough to where it doesn't come on as much anymore. I know for uh, for the Hemi, some suggestions that people have to keep this from happening as long as possible is make sure you do your oil changes on time with full synthetic oil. People yeah. are saying that for the Dodges anyway, they like Valvoline synthetic mm -hmm. they feel like it works better i think with silverado like uh i would probably go with mobile one full synthetic as long that's as it's approved for the dexos gm standard with at general motors is, is mobile one so for that reason i would say use that oil same with like um like we know all the cummins engines are tested with the valvoline premium blue diesel oil Mm -hmm. And so anybody changing oil in their Cummins, use that because that's what has the most hours on it, the most testing. That's what they're used to running. So you're you're saying they Chevy test with Mobile One? They, yeah, they do. Yeah, I've talked to an old um, GM tech, and they've pretty much run Mobile One and everything when they do all their dyno testing and all their road testing. It's always Mobile One that they're using, uh, the full synthetic. And then they've done side by side dyno tests with other oils and Mobile One oils. And the mobile one oils always go further uh, in their longevity test on dynos than any other oils as well. Okay. So, yeah. So if I were you, if you're going to be a truck guy, I would see if you can figure out how to change your own oil so that it doesn't cost that much. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get those little ramps that you could drive the truck up onto, that usually makes it a whole lot easier. 
what you could really do if you really want to be nerdy about it is every 2,500 miles, just drain and fill the oil. Mm-hmm. And then every 5,000 miles, drain and fill the oil and change the filter with the factory filter. And don't let it idle forever. You know, don't let it idle a lot. If it starts ticking at 100,000 miles, you're going to have to pay a couple grand for new lifters. I mean, it is what yep. it is, but it's better than paying $15,000 for new turbos and, a, and whatever sure. Tundra or Hurricane I-6 is coming out later. Yeah, that's, a, that's an important point you made there about idling. Uh, there's there's people that run into issues, uh, and it's more common than one might think, where you know guys don't run them very hard or for very long. And so they don't really get up to operating temp or they don't get up to operating temp for very long. And every time that engine heats up and cools down, there's condensation inside of that engine. So when it warm, when it heats back up and runs again, you need to evaporate all that moisture back out of your engine again before you shut it back down. So if you're not getting all that moisture back out of your engine and only doing short drives or idling a lot, you'll start to get like milky oil built up in your oil. And that'll cause you issues as well. So yeah, the short trips are, are not good even for the... Those little Honda 1.5 liter turbos, they they had to tell people to stop doing little tiny trips all the time. Yeah. But um. But yeah, no short trips. Lots of oil changes. Uh, Dane says the transmission problems are figured out. So we will we will trust Dane on that. <laughs> Buy with confidence. Buy that blue truck right there. That sucker. That blue pretty. look. Look at this. Looks nice, man. Yeah. Seven thousand miles. That I like blue. blue. Yeah, me too. This is a nice color too. Yeah, yeah, it looks real good. Forty-two thousand. That ain't bad, man. Yeah. yeah, stop being afraid of used trucks, man. You don't need to buy no new truck. No, <laughs> waste your money. Uh, pretty much everything I buy, that's it, going to be like a new, newer pickup for me. Is going to be a one owner, and like you were saying about, you know, you're not really buying the truck; you're buying the previous owner. Like if I go to their house and their place is a cluttered mess. I'm like, yeah, no. But like, if the guy, the guy's like super detailed and his garage is clean, and you can tell that he takes care of just everything that he owns, like that's the guy that I want to buy something from. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, and one other thing, like, uh, I know that people they get with one particular brand, and then they feel like they're a Toyota guy or a Dodge guy. Mm-hmm. or a Ford guy. Like, look, all these these companies, they go up and down. They put different in engines. They put different engines and transmissions in these trucks and cars every, you know, 10, 15 years. When a truck or car gets a new engine, it's, it's a different car. Like, mm-hmm. so you don't think that, oh, it's because it's a Tundra. Because the last Tundra was good, that this new engine is going to be the exact same. It's not. Yeah. I mean, look at the specific powertrain, engine and transmission. Those are the two most important things. And then um, shop the previous owner and don't be afraid to go back and forth. I mean, I've had uh, Chevys. I've had a, a, a Dodge Promaster or Ram Promaster or whatever you want to call it. I've had Hondas, Toyota. I had all type of cars. You know, you just got to look at the individual car, mm-hmm. not just a brand. Yeah, they all break. Yeah, they all break anyway, so. Yeah, just not as much as Chevys, but they all break. <laughs> yeah. You just recommended a Chevy. How are you going to say Chevy? I know. I'm, I'm pulling everybody's leg. Buy, buy yeah. the Chevy. Buy, buy confidence. <laughs> yeah, you know, so. But, you know, if you want to stick with Toyotas, you can stick with Toyota. Just get the older older Tundra. It's no big deal. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. That's what we got for you today. Thank you for tuning in and have a good one. Yep. See you guys.